We're going to lead off this video by saying there is absolutely nothing wrong with simply wanting to smell good and be noticed for it. Perhaps by something that is simple, but still has presence. Something that is effortless for passerby to wrap their heads around and maybe even inspire some pleasant feelings and heck, maybe even get you a compliment or two. Something like Hawass. Rosasi Hawass is known to do this. Easy to wear, simple profile, mass appealing, also known to be very long lasting. We'll get to that in a second. Some might think I feel the opposite of what I just said. Some people think that I think that only wanting to smell good is a blasphemous sin. And it is. <laughs> the point that I've tried to make very clear is that I personally do not typically wear fragrances for the reasons I talked about. Pleasing others and getting compliments. I don't simply do that. And that's all I try to convey through my channel because it's my channel, it's my content, my ideas, but it is still a valid reason to wear fragrance. If that's what you like to do, you like to please others, so be it. Nonetheless, when I wear fragrance, I long to wear something that I absolutely love, and it's a bonus if it lasts all day. But if it's going to, it is often a requisite that the fragrance evolves through the day on my skin. Now, there are plenty of fragrances that I enjoy wearing that don't do this but a majority of the ones I reach for do. Now this evolution can look a number of ways. There's no one way to qualify it. Each one of these fragrances I'm gonna talk about does it in their own ways. I'm kind of weird. I like to forget what a fragrance smelled like when I first sprayed it because of how much it transitions or how much it evolves on my skin. But of course I can always remind myself of the opening by just respraying. All of this to say, and this is my thesis, I want my fragrance to hold my interest, not just my attention. You hear that? Future Justin, can you play it back? <laughs> I want my fragrance to hold my interest, not just my attention. If it's going to last, it can't just be a one or two track album. That's what Hawass is when I wear it. It's like listening to one song that you really love on repeat for 24 hours. That gets old. So I'm gonna share with you 10 fragrances that absolutely captivate me from start to finish. They all have great openings, they all have great transitions and wonderful dry downs. They don't all necessarily last a very long time, but for the time that they persist, they transform some of them quite radically. So let's dive right into it. In no particular order, our first fragrance up is from Tom Ford, it's Beau De Jour. This is essentially a modernized classic men's barbershop fougere that is made so robust. Definitely bears a resemblance to Zeno Davidoff from 1986, but it's just thicker, denser, richer, stronger, more robust, more present than that. And quite long lasting for me, it is pretty quintessential barbershop, but definitely smells a bit old school, smells a little mature, lots of lavender and a lot of oak moss, but it has a beautiful, ambery, sweet, warm heart and base. As it dries, the cleanliness kind of fades and that ambery warmth just envelops me. And it's very, very potent. It's very present. I smell it all the way around me most of the day and it smells so gentlemanly, so classy, so refined. It just captures my interest all day long. That's Tom Ford Beau de Jour. Love this stuff. Up next from Argos, possibly one of their more polarizing offerings, but I still think it's wonderful and it's gotten me some great feedback. If that counts for anything, if you're worried about what people think, this one has actually been liked by other people around me. This is Brivido della Caccia. Thrill of the chase, sharp, green, bitter, mate and juniper berry, smoky birch wood, but a touch of tonka bean in there. It starts off very green, a little fresh, again, sharp and bitter, lots of leather in there as well. But as it dries, the birch wood and tonka bean and leather kind of come to the forefront. The green sharpness fades and it gets a little sweet, just a little bit of an almost vanilla-like creamy smooth sweetness in the dry down, especially deep, like six, seven, eight hours in, stunning. I love the opening, it's not for everyone. It's very interest grabbing and the dry down just holds on to that because it changes and it's beautiful. Beautiful, cohesive transition. 
Revito Della Caccia. As I always say, you can use the code FRESH10 to save you some money on any purchase from Argos, including a discovery set gonna have a link down below. Let's talk about a designer fragrance. From Dior, kind of unfair for those of us in North America, so I do apologize, but if you can get your hands on this in its current form, I think you won't be disappointed, but I can't guarantee that because I haven't tried it. I'm talking about the original Dior Homme. This is the 2011 formulation, which has now been renamed Dior Homme Original. What I love about Dior Homme, and I've gotten a lot of wear out of this, and it doesn't look like it, because it looks like I got a lot of juice left, but I've wore this dozens of times and I don't spray a ton of it, so that's why there's still quite a bit left. I've had this bottle for almost six years, believe it or not. Wow. I love that it starts off very waxy, irisy, and lavender fresh. Aromatic, fresh and clean in a way, but not like shower gel or soapy. Immediately backed with this slightly powdery, waxy iris and a little bit of chocolatey cacao in there. And as it dries down, the lavender fades, the iris even fades a bit and you're left with more leather and cacao. So it becomes almost chocolate leather, still quite smooth and so beautiful, so elegant and so unique. This is a timeless fragrance DNA. And I love how it captures my interest from start to finish. Dior Om, let me know how you feel about it. I know it's polarizing, but if you love it, let me know. If you hate it, you're wrong. From the House of Raja Parfum, this has a new flanker, which I do like a little, 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 tiny bit more than the original here, but the original is still so special to me. And if I had to choose one of the two to recommend, I would choose the original. And this is Apex. The way that this stuff dries on my skin compared to how it starts, is a beautiful transition. It starts off very fresh and green, but a little sweet and, and resinous in a way and quite boozy. As it dries down, it becomes a little bit more animalic. The leather comes to the forefront, the freshness fades, the resinous quality that's kind of sweet starts to take over more and it's kind of a different animal which is quite literally what they're going for. It's so interesting to me. Has a little bit of an old school feel, but still a hint of modernity as well. The Parfum Flinker might be even a little bit more modern, but on my skin, I don't remember it transitioning quite as much, but also I haven't wore it as much, so I'll have to report back on that, but I can say with confidence that I love how this sprays on on my skin and dries down and it keeps my interest and it stays on me a good seven, eight hours, so that's good enough for me. Apex from Raja Parfum. From BDK, we have Gris Charnel x -Straight. What I love about this is that it's based on a beautifully unique profile and DNA. I love the original Gris Charnel. I love its creamy, sweet, smooth, fruity fig and iris and sandalwood. It is so beautiful smelling. And what I love about the x -Straight is that it's heavier on the base note, so you still have the same DNA, but as it dries, the sandalwood becomes quite dusty on my skin and even a little sexy. It totally changes. You kind of lose the fruitiness of the fig. The iris is still kind of there, a little powdery, but the sandalwood really takes over. Creamy, but still a little dusty in a way. It retains a touch of sweetness, but not too much. And also the tea, I forgot about the tea. The tea fades for sure. So it changes quite a bit. Deep dry down, super sexy, super interesting. I often want to respray it just to remember where it came from. That is Gris Charnel X Straight, lovely stuff. We have another barbershop classic, Sartorial from Penhaligans. This is a fan favorite. A lot of people love this one. And what I love about how this dries, not too different from Beau de Jour, not in terms of scent, but conceptually, it starts off quite clean and fresh in a slightly different way. This is a different take on barbershop. Lots of lavender in here aldehydes, metallic notes. It's quite different and actually quite more complex than Beau de Jour. But as it dries, this honey beeswax feel comes to the forefront. It gets kind of sticky and warm and sweet and maybe even a little bit leathery. Still smells like a barbershop feel, but changes quite a bit into something different. A very unique take on the fougere. There's a reason why people Go goo goo for this stuff. If you want to smell a little different, but still easily clean and refined, Sartorial is the way to go. And you might like the way it transforms as much as I do. I cannot get enough of Lunar Vetiver. I've loved this stuff for several years now from Amarud here. And what I love about it, again, quite a change, quite a duality, very, very fresh 
and spicy at the top. Lots of green vetiver, very woody, green, fresh, with a lot of pimento pepper, almost a hot pepper to it. It has a huge kick to it. It really, really captures your interest. But as it dries, it smooths out, and I get a little bit of this creamy, smooth, sweet, vanilla-like vibe in there that is just so cozy smelling. It's such a difference from how it starts out. And I just can't help but want to get more wafts of it as it's drying down on my skin around me. I'm smelling it in the air and it is just captivating me. And the way it changes from the way it starts, night and day. I think the name is perfect. Lunar for the moon, there's a nighttime quality to it kind of calms down as it dries, but vetiver is quite heavy here. And when vetiver is in the front, it can be very much in the front. I highly recommend getting a sample of Lunar Vetiver. Such a unique take on vetiver. Fresh, spicy, and minty to start, but drying down to something kind of leathery, ashy, resinous, sweet, and warm. Cold to warm. We've seen quite a bit of this because that is one of my favorite transitions. Amouage Enclave does just all of that. Minty, fresh, spicy, I think cardamom perhaps, but the way it dries down is completely different. Surprisingly a little polarizing, not everyone loves this one. I can't get enough of it. I love the sweetness it has because it's not delicious sweetness. There's something intriguing about it, something mysterious about it. It wears so beautifully all day on my skin. Every time I spray it, I never regret it. It's one of those few fragrances in my collection where I spray it on and I'm like, I am so glad I'm wearing this today because I know the journey I'm about to go on. Amouage Enclave is a stunning scent. Do check it out if you've been sleeping on it. It's a few years old by now, but totally worth it. Man, guys, the evolution on this fragrance is so alluring. This is Bois 1920 Dolce Di Giorno. Starts off very, very warm, spicy, and woody. Cinnamon, cedar wood, lots of Nagamatha and plum as well. There's a fruity juiciness that's a little dark. But as it dries down, man, the vanilla comes through. It kind of stays cinnamony, so cinnamon, vanilla, and dry woody cedar wood. That combination, as it smooths, it gets rounded out because at first it has some rough edges to it while still being beautiful. But when it dries down, it calms, it smooths out. Lovely stuff. It's a little sweet warm, very comforting, and again, very alluring. Do check it out. One of my first niche fragrance plunges, I bought a sample of this without really knowing anything about niche and fell in love and have loved it ever since. That was years ago, and here we are years later. And I'm a niche snob and a niche addict. <laughs> Boys 1920 Dolce Di Giorno. Okay, and here at the last pick, I do think that, in my opinion, this fragrance still has the best wearing experience from Creed. From start to finish, the opening, iconic, beautiful, invigorating, the dry down, one of the best in the game, period. Kind of a perfect fragrance if you like this type of fragrance. This is Green Irish Tweed. Now I can't speak for the current batches because I haven't smelled any of them. They don't make this bottle style anymore. The 75 milliliter bottle with the, the green kind of suede plaque and the clear bottle, it's all black now, but I can speak about this juice being very green and fresh, very invigorating, lots of violet leaf, lots of lemon verbena, maybe a touch of iris. It's dewy smelling, it smells like wet grass in the early morning, lovely stuff, but as it dries, it gets this rounded muskiness to it that is just sexy. It's still kind of green, but not quite as clean smelling, and the muskiness that comes through just adds this level of luxury that cannot be beat. The dry down is incredible. Quite a change from the opening, still carries the same personality, still very refined, something that just suits a later part of the day. If you do wear it all day and it lasts for you, by the time it dries down into the evening, it just makes sense the way that it smells. It smells like the end of a long but successful day of achievement. That is green Irish tweed. Let me know if you dig this one. That's it. I wanna know what you think of these fragrances. I wanna know what you think of this concept of fragrances capturing your interest rather than just your attention. And that also applies to the people around you. I know there's gonna be a split on this because there's a split on everything in life, but that's totally fine. Why did I make this video? Because why not? It's a topic I wanted to explore. It's gonna stand alone as its own thing. You resonate with it or you don't. Either way, you're right. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
Peace. I'll see you in the next one.